Welcome to this week's episode of Brainstorm, where we give you a glimpse into the world of science for Thursday, October 31st, 2013. Ow! Our top story comes from the world of neuroscience. Researchers from the University of North Carolina have been studying some basic properties of neurons and made an interesting discovery. If you remember your high school biology, you will recall that a neuron has three main parts. The cell body, where the nucleus and much of the usual cell stuff is, the axon, and the dendrites. When something triggers a neuron, like a sensor in the retina, nose, or another neuron, an electrical impulse is generated that travels down the axon until it reaches the synapse. Compounds called neurotransmitters are then released and cross the tiny gap that is the synapse before reaching the dendrites of another neuron. This then generates more electrical potential which could trigger the second neuron, and the process begins all over again. Now this is somewhat of a simplification, but that is basically how neurons communicate and is a widely accepted model of how things work. The problem with this is that dendrites have some of the same mechanisms that axons use to carry and produce their electrical impulses, which suggests that they could sometimes trigger themselves. It was not known if this kind of function was normal for neurons until now. Initial results of experiments involving mice and visual inputs showed that the dendrites can in fact generate their own pulses, meaning that they are not just passive carriers of information, but have some sort of computational function. This could greatly increase the complexity and computational power of the brain. Given that individual parts of neurons, and not just networks of them, have at least some rudimentary computing function, much more research is needed to discover what factors actually caused dendrites to generate their own electrical impulses, and how this new model relates to certain neurological diseases. But it is a fairly big discovery, and demonstrates how much more there still is to learn. We then take a sharp left turn from brains to botany with this news from the world of biology. Scientists from the Fraunhofer Institute for Molecular Biology and Applied Ecology have been developing a new way to produce natural rubber. It may seem kind of obvious, but rubber is an extremely important material, mainly for tires, but for other purposes as well. And it's renewable. But as with almost anything, the production of rubber could be more environmentally friendly. You see, it mostly comes from the sap of a particular tree which prefers tropical climates, which limits the land it can be grown on and results in a lot of transportation if the rubber is being processed elsewhere. These scientists, on the other hand, have found an alternative source of rubber sap, dandelions. Often considered a weed, it actually contains a decent amount of the same compounds found in rubber trees. For years now, they have been growing, studying, and breeding many dandelion varieties, looking for optimum rubber output. They are much easier to grow, have much faster life cycles, and can even use land not usually suitable for agriculture. A first pilot project to extract and process the dandelion rubber has been extremely successful, and they hope to scale up to full test production. One idea is to grow fields of dandelions right next to processing plants to virtually eliminate any cost and greenhouse emissions that come from transporting the rubber sap. And because it's easier to grow, it can be produced in places like Europe, even with a slightly cold climate. There's not really a catchy way to end this story, just rubber from dandelions. Well, hope you enjoyed this episode. What new use would you find for an underappreciated plant? And to make this question challenging, don't just say hemp. Hemp is not allowed.